everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm gonna do my very best to tell you and show you everything I know and everything I think you wanna know about Moore's GTRS guitar system. I think it's pronounced GTRS. I don't think you're supposed to say it as a full word. Guitars? It doesn't feel right. Guitars. No, I think it's supposed to be GTRS. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But anyways, this is an extremely ambitious product. It's more than just a guitar. It's a guitar system, like I said. It is a guitar. It is a guitar, I will say that. But you can see there's the black knob down here and when I turn it on, it lights up. And I can scroll through various different colors once it's booted up. Those are different presets. All sorts of different amp and effect models and you know, like everything else that you can imagine is built into this guitar. You can plug headphones direct into the output. You can see there's a big chunk of plastic down here that houses all that computer stuff. But yeah, it's got this fully integrated kind of multi-effect sort of thing going on. You can control it all with your phone. You can also buy a foot switch that connects to it over Bluetooth to control your effects, your presets, a looper, a tuner, tap tempo, stuff like that. And it's all wireless. I mean, you gotta plug headphones in, but everything else is wireless with this guitar. It's a really interesting concept. And like I said, it's, it's very ambitious. Like they really swung for the fences with this one. And it means that there is a lot to go through. There is a lot of ground to cover with this guitar. So let's talk about the guitar first and then I'm gonna plug it into some normal amps and normal effects. And then I'll go through the app and like as much as I can cover because there is a lot. There is a lot going on here. So anyways, I'm gonna do my normal guitar thing where I go tip to tail and everything in between. So we'll start with the headstock. They're, they're doing that kind of modern, like boutique, high-end take on a Strat headstock shape here. Like they're trying to do that, that sewer thing. Sure, sure, sewer, I think it's sewer. <laughs> how many words am I not gonna know how to say in this video? But yeah, it's not my favorite kind of shape for a headstock, that kind of like beak shape, but I don't hate it. It certainly is acceptable as far as, you know, modern guitar headstock shapes go. There's nothing about it that I can actually say like, ah, oh, I don't like it. But, you know, it is what it is. It's got that modern kind of like beaky little thing going on there. It's not a hook. I hate it when there's hooks. I don't like hooks, but it's got that beak for sure. Uh, a very roasted baked maple neck going on. Nice and dark satin finish all the way across the neck. Rosewood fingerboard. The nut. It might be bone, I don't remember. Editing Ryan, <laughs> let everyone know what the nut is. It seems to be cut just fine. I have had zero tuning stability issues with, with this guitar, even when I'm abusing the wiggle stick. I'm sure I will go out of tune here and there <laughs> abusing the stick in this video, but I've been pleasantly surprised with just how tuning stable this guitar is. The tuners themselves, uh, out of the box, they had a little bit of a jumpy thing to them. I tightened them down. I don't know if you knew that you could do this, but there's screws at the end of tuners and you can tighten them with a screwdriver and it'll firm them up. So I did that and that little bit of jumpiness with the tuning pegs went away. They're totally fine. These are fine tuners. They're not, you know, like anything excellent or incredible or anything like that, but they're completely functional. They're nice and smooth. They hold tune just fine. The frets. This is something that I have to talk about and it's one of those moments where I get to look at the audience and say, the thing that you think happens probably doesn't happen. There's a lot of people who think that when someone like me, you know, someone with a guitar YouTube channel is sent a guitar, it's been picked over with a fine tooth comb and examined with a microscope and stuff like that to make sure it's the best of the best. I really don't think that's true. The vast majority of times this guitar came with fret issues. And it was to the point where I hit up a bunch of my fellow YouTubers who had covered this guitar. I was like, hey, did you have this issue? Is this a problem across the line? And they're like, no, ours were fine. What happened is I, th I think whoever was on that part of the quality control line took a lunch break or something like that. And this got through the line. The edges of the frets were like, I've never experienced this before. How do I explain this? So like if this is the edge of the fretboard right there, 
and a fret usually ends on the end like that, there was a little bit of a lip like wrapped over the edge of the fretboard, like, the, like a very minuscule, like microscopic, like knife edge. <laughs> and knife is an accurate term to use here because it was sharp all the way up and down the neck. And so I had to do about, I wanna say 10 or 15 minutes of work with a little Stumac file I have here to knock back that edge. And now it feels just fine. So whoever was supposed to do that on the assembly line didn't get to it on this guitar. But like I said, it was a 10 or 15 minute fix and it's totally fine now. I actually left the last three frets undressed. Well, not undressed, because they're, they're, they're trimmed, they're dressed normally, but that little bit of edge was left somehow. I don't know. But other than that, they are jumbo nickel frets. They seem to be fine across the neck. There's no dead spots. There's no buzzing or anything like that. The neck is straight and comfortable and fast. It's a fast playing guitar. Really that fret issue was my only issue with this guitar, really, as a guitar, as it is, you know? I'm not gonna, we'll get into the electronics and stuff like that. I'm sure I have notes when we get to that. The pickups, they're very stratty. This is a like a classically, stereotypically stratty sounding guitar. They are quacky, they're hollow, they're bright and twangy. Even the bridge pickup has quite a bit of strat character to it while being a humbucker. The bridge hardware is honestly impressive. I like it a lot. It's a modern bridge despite having kind of like the punched saddle aesthetic, like that bent steel little plate aesthetic that vintage strat kind of saddle but it's a modern bridge in that it has a push in bar with an allen key adjuster on the side to tighten it it's not a screw in it's not going to flop around you can do that indefinitely and it's never going to strip it out or anything like that you can adjust it to be exactly what you want then you've got a volume knob a tone knob and a five-way switch this guitar functions as a normal electric guitar when you have all that computer stuff off the body Let's talk about the body last. I love this finish. I got to pick the finish and I'm so glad because they only have one metal flake finish and I love metal flake finishes and it's beautiful. I love, love, love how heavy this metal flake is. It looks like a motorcycle helmet, guys. GTRS, Moore, whoever's listening right now, more of this, please. You only have one color with this going on. I want more of this. I want to see so many colors with this metal flick. Uh, the body has all your normal strat kind of appointments. You've got a comfort armrest here. You've got a belly cut and then you have a little bit of a hand cut here. It does angle that neck plate a little bit. So there is an argument to be made that there is a bit of an ergonomics thing happening there, but I think it's mostly just a visual style. Like it's, I wanna say it's maybe an eighth of an inch thinner on the bottom side versus the top side of that neck heel there. So it's a little bit debatable, you know, how functional this little divot here actually is. But you know, it sets their body apart from a stock Strat style body. Other than that, that is the guitar. So let's plug it in and check it out. All right, I'm running through my two Princeton's rig. <laughs> I laugh because from my perspective, there's, there's nothing there. It feels absurd every time and it, it cracks me up, but you know, you love it, I love it. We love the two Princeton's gag, right? It's never gonna stop. <laughs> so anyways, let's get into it. I wanna start with the neck pickup and work down to the bridge and then I'll turn on an overdrive and work back up to the neck pickup. Yeah, stereotypical Strat sounds with that. Hollow and quacky and twangy and bright, just like I said. On to the number two position. The 
exactly what you would expect. I believe the pickups are Al Nico. Middle position. I'm rushing through the pickup settings to get to all the app stuff because there is so much ground to cover. Strap middle positions get ignored, but it's a fun sound. If you're on team middle, tell me in the comment section. Team middle pickup, represent. Number two position, the humbucker plus the middle pickup. the bridge humbucker more output more mids it's got that humbucker push to it but still has quite a bit of brightness to it a very appropriately voiced humbucker for an hss sort of loadout I will say too that I did do a little bit of a setup on this guitar just to have it playing the way I personally like my guitars to be set up. It came with the bridge floating, which I don't typically like. So I pulled it back so the bridge is just gently resting on the body. Also, I lowered the action a little bit and then I raised it a little bit. <laughs> so I actually don't know where it is in relation to how it originally came set up, but it feels great to me now. It wasn't hard to set up. Everyone should learn how to set up their guitars their, themselves. I mean, there's always, you know, times to take things to pros, but general setup, you should learn how to do yourself. It's not hard. You use a little Allen key. I have a little tool like this that has a hex key at the end and little kind of, what do you call those, bits, extra bits inside. And I just adjust all my saddles and dial it in just the way that I like it. All right, let's try it with some dirt now. I've got the Wampler Bell overdrive on the ground. We'll start with the bridge pickup and work our way back up to the neck. On to the number two position. Here is the middle position. What song is that? It could be one of like five different songs from the 80s, right? <laughs> Here is the number four. On to the next pickup. Getting a little stanky with those notes. What I like about you is R-O-C-K in the USA? <laughs> All right, let's get set up to show off the app now. I've got to set up a whole other rig to make that happen. 
all set up and ready to go. I'm running a bit of a unique rig here to monitor and record this. Normally, you could just plug your headphones straight in and listen to what you're playing and jam along to YouTube and stuff like that and do everything that you need to do. But because I need to record this, I have to do something different. I'm running a guitar cable out of there into a splitter, which is going between my headphones, which unfortunately will be one side only because of what happens when you run stereo through a guitar pedal and then into a stereo headphone. <laughs> and then I'm running from the splitter into my recorder, which I'm hoping, fingers crossed, won't have any issue with this audio. I've already done a bunch of tests and it seemed totally fine, but who knows? Like it might have an issue with the line level or something. I've had issues with that with other products in the past. If I have an issue, I'll edit around it or editing Ryan will step in and tell us exactly what's going on in case there's like extra weird clipping happening or whatnot. So anyways, let's do this thing. To turn it on, you just turn this up. There's a soft little click there. It flashes as it boots and then it turns the solid color and I'm on my first preset. <laughs> Of course, I've made myself a surf preset because <laughs> you know me, that's what I like. You don't actually need the app on or anything else to access your presets. You get four presets across this knob. You just click it in. Here is my dry crunch sort of preset. I've got an ambient preset. And a metal preset. I'll go into everything that goes into those presets in a bit. You can also control all that with the foot switch, which is not included. I think you have to buy that separately. They send it to me separately anyways, but you can select between all your presets. You can access a looper. You can access a tuner. You can access various different banks, I think. So you can bank through all the presets that you might have. But anyways, before we do all that, let's connect to the app. I'm telling you, there's a lot to this. There is a lot going on. All right, now we're connected and I'm gonna guide you through the app first because I needed help with that. I actually hit up Colin Scott because he had filmed one of these as well. I was like, how did you do that? How did you get to that sub menu? I am not able to figure this out. So he very gracefully helped me out. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> as I was trying to figure this out for myself. So there's three different things here, a file folder, there is a slider thing, and there is a wrench. I'm gonna start off by showing what I thought was all the settings I wanted to get into, that slider thing. It's just a basic mixer. It is your Bluetooth, USB out, and guitar, and main out mixer. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to get it into all the nitty gritty and effects and stuff. So then I click the wrench, and it dumps me here. I'm like, okay, there's the guitar. What do I do now? I was like, well, there's you know, a bunch of presets up here. So I was scrolling through the presets and I was frustrated because like, surely there must be a way to adjust all those presets and make new presets. So I'm looking at this, there's a foot switch thing, there's a Bluetooth, there's, there's a, a little gear, I'll press the gear. Oh, here's a bunch of stuff. Here's a helpful menu. You've got your global settings, you have your tuner, you've got a drum machine thing here so you can jam along to various different drum loops. Uh, a chord finder, the mixer again, software version, language, uh, rename your Bluetooth, standby mode, and a looper. There's a looper, that's useful. But how the heck do I adjust all the effects and the amps and everything? I'm pretty sure that was in the product description. I completely missed that the, the, the representation of the little guitar knob is flashing down here, and that means that you can click on it. I thought it was just showing that the guitar is on. <laughs> so you click that, it feels like it's hidden. And it dumps you 
into your effect builder here. You've got dynamics, you've got overdrive, you've got reverb, you've got delay, amp, modulation, and cab, and you can drag and drop the order any way you want. You can get yourself into all sorts of ridiculous trouble if you want to. You can put your cab before your amp, I think, if you want to. Holy heck, you can. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do that and find out what happens. So this is my surf patch. I'll show you what went into it. It has a compressor to fatten up those single coils a little bit. The reverb is the plate reverb. I didn't like the spring reverb. I mean, none of the reverbs in this drip. There's no drip in this. But the plate reverb is a little bit smoother and the spring has that very clicky stacked delay sort of thing happening. You hear that? For recording, it's pretty, but for the percussive surfy stuff that I want, it's, it's not what I want. But with that plate reverb, I feel like I've been able to dial in a sound that is functional for what I like to mess with, especially for like a headphone solution, a jamming on the couch solution. It's more than fine for me. The amp is a 65 US twin. The cab is a US Deluxe 112. Let's go through some of the other presets. Here is my dry crunch sort of preset. When I'm jamming along to YouTube videos and stuff like that, that's the sort of sound that I'm most likely to lean into because it's versatile and I can roll back the volume on the guitar. And get it a little bit cleaner, and then turn it up and get it a bit heavier. Throw in the humbucker. I've got a tube drive overdrive. I've got a Rockverb CL, and I have a Rec 412 cab and a splash of Hall Reverb on this pad. <laughs> on to the next preset, which I could, you know, select with this. The ambient. Now this is where it's convenient to have the foot switch because you can do tap tempo with the foot switch. A65 US Deluxe, apparently I like that amp. I've got a delay, a modulation delay, a compressor. I forgot I put that compressor there. The reverb is the modulation reverb, and the cab is the US Deluxe 112. On to the metal setting. <laughs> I start 
start off the patch with a metal zone because of course it doesn't have all the controls you'd normally find on a metal zone it's much more simple gain tone and volume the amp is a huge in od the amps have all the settings that you would expect gain bass mid treble presence and master it's the same controls for all the amps the cab is an ev 50 50 4 by 12 and then i have a little bit of tape delay on there <laughs> I like it. I think it's a good multi-purpose, like general metal sound kind of preset that I've made here. Metal heads. How did I do on my metal preset? But let's go through. I'm not going to go through all the presets and I'm not going to show off the sound of every single thing because it would take like so long. I don't, I don't think this video could be under five hours long if I went through everything. It would be so boring. But say we'll go to the amps and I'll show you just how many amps there are. Under the low gain, 29 amps. Under high gain, 23 amps. That's over 50 amps. And then cabs, 25 cabs, guys. So over 50 amps, 25 cabs. You can do the math, mixing and matching. There's a lot. There's a lot of potential combinations there. It's the same for everything. For the overdrive boost, you have two boosts, bunch of overdrives, there's eight of them, bunch of fuzzes and distortions, there's nine of them. For the dynamic stuff, there's four options. Uh, NG, I don't know what that is, compressor, touch wah, auto wah, for dynam, oh. For modulations, 15 different modulations, phaser, step phaser, flange, jet flange, <laughs> tremolo, stutter, vibrato, pitch shift, rotary, and a chorus, tri-chorus, ring modulator, Q filter, lo-fi, slow gear. Oh my gosh, delay. There are six different delays. Digital, analog, real echo, tape, mod, reverse, and the reverbs. You've got six different reverbs. Room, hall, plate, spring, and modulation. Now, I don't think anything in here is really comparable to like high-end floorboard modelers and stuff like that. Uh, but as a system that is built into your guitar that you can control with your phone or with this foot switch, but you don't need either of those. You can just plug into your guitar and monitor it with headphones and use it as a practice rig, as potentially maybe a busking rig, as just a jamming on the couch rig, as a travel rig. There's an incredible wealth of sounds and settings that you can explore with this system. It, I keep thinking like, if I had had this when I was learning guitar as a teenager in the 90s, I would have zero complaints. I would think it was a perfect system. I mean, the user interface, like what, it took me a while to figure it out. But other than that, like in perspective for what's going on here, a battery powered, like multi-effect thing that's built into a guitar, <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive. And a big question I keep having in my head is like, is this the future? Is this the start of a trend? Seeing like complete rigs built into our guitars. Like the technology is there now. It's there. Battery technology is there. Computer technology is there. Modeling technology is really, really, really close to matching tube amps. It can always be better. And this is not, you know, a full representation of the best sounds by any means that you can get out of digital. But the fact that there is so much there, hence that a future where guitar rigs look a little bit different than they look now. Like imagine just plugging your guitar in to front a house and that's your whole rig. It's a bit wild to think about. So what have I missed? <laughs> Let's go back to the menu here. Uh, there is the tuner. 
You can also access this from your presets on the foot switch. Hold this down. And now you are at the tuner. Nothing wrong with the tuner at all. Go back to here. There is the drum thing. It's functional. It works. It gives you plenty to jam with here. There's a bunch of beats that are just listed as numbers. And then there's genre beats like rock shuffle, rock ballad, punk, stuff like that, hard rock. Um, the samples of the drums themselves are a bit humorous, a little bit corny, but they're totally functional, especially for someone who's learning or just wants a jamming tool. There's also a metronome there. Uh, back to the menu, there is a chord library. Bunch of useful information there for the beginner and you know, people who just can't remember that one chord. The mixer that I already showed. There is a looper and honestly, if you plan on using the looper, I strongly recommend. I'm not trying to upsell you, I'm just telling you right now, I strongly recommend getting the foot switch if you're gonna use the looper. It's just a little bit tricky to press record. It taps in with a little bit of a drum beat and then you can record, but then rushing from the fretboard to press stop can be a bit much. So if you're planning on using the looper with this, which I do recommend, it's fun. You can lay down a loop with one preset and then switch your presets and lay down like a high gain riff over it or something like that. It's a fun way to jam around. Uh, but I do recommend getting the foot switch if you're gonna use the looper because it's so much more functional. And then you've got standby mode, you've got rename uh, to rename the, uh, the Bluetooth and you've got language and software version. But there's one more thing I wanna show off here. That's a bit different. And I wasn't expecting it, and I'm still not totally sure how I feel about it. You click this little thing here, you turn on Tone Capture Guitar, and now you can access guitar models. This switch is no longer for selecting your own physical pickups. It is for selecting between different guitar models. I've got Strat CS on the bridge. I have JP Piezo on the number two. 59 Les Paul in the middle, auditorium CE acoustic guitar model on the number four, and then a Jaguar on <laughs> the neck pickup. So here is that Strat. I am on the surf setting. I wanna, hmm, I wanna turn off the reverb just so you guys can hear it without the reverb. <laughs> That is a different sound than the bridge pickup of this guitar. I'll turn it off and you can hear that. Here's the neck pickup on that setting. I have the surf patch dialed in to favor single coil, so the bridge pickup, that, that humbucker, kind of clips that preset. You hear that? But then we turn on the guitar model and it's modeling a Strat sound. Then we go to the next setting, the JP Piezo. Yeah, that's not a sound that this guitar should make. Fifty nine Les Paul. switch to that dirt channel. A weird little bit of sag there. It sounds like it's struggling with that a little bit. And then on to the auditorium CE, I'll go back to the surf setting. The reverb is back on, but whatever. 
you know what? I'll I'll turn it off. And then onto that Jaguar setting. Which I should have the surf on, right? I should turn the reverb back on. Versus the actual neck pickup. Jaguar. through back to my preset with the reverb. And there's a bunch of other guitars in there. You can have a preset set on there so you do have the original tone. Auditorium CEs, 52 Telecaster, JP, Sure Classic, E Electric Casino, MD35. There's a bunch to mess with. Turn that off. So what do you guys think? There is a lot going on here. This is an extremely ambitious product. According to the retailers that I've looked at, it's 650 bucks, which I feel is a fair price. If this was just a guitar, without the electronics, without that system in there. I feel like kind of like the $500 range would be a number that I would expect. And maybe, you know, the, the little bit of a fret issue that I had is causing me to think that way. It's causing me to knock down my value of the guitar. But that whole system, I mean, you, there's, there's, you know, headphone plugs that you can buy for 120 bucks that don't do nearly as much as that do. Like they're just headphone plugs. I mean, there's ones for 80 bucks and, and you know, what not too. But considering, you know, from my personal impressions of this guitar, it's fairly built like a $500 ish guitar. And then it has the system built in. It has so much to offer. I think the price is more than fair. And I think if you know that you want this, then you know that you know that you want it. It's gonna fill some sort of role in your life or you're just curious about it, or it's gonna be you know, the best tool in your mind for being a guitar to learn on, a guitar for traveling with, a guitar for practicing on the couch. It's an interesting concept. And I've said a lot positive about it, but to kind of temper that, and to balance against it, I do want to revisit a few negatives and maybe have, you know, a moment to have some clarity to think about other like little criticisms that I might want to bring up. The frets were a big issue for me. I was able to fix them, like I said, uh, with, where did my file go? I lost my file. <laughs> with 10 minutes with a little file, I was able to fix it. You don't need a fancy file to do that. You could probably do it with a nail file or something like that. If you actually ran into that, because no one else that I talked to, I talked about like three or four other channels and they're like, no, our frets were actually pretty good. We didn't experience that. So that was specific to my guitar. Still, it could happen to you, the consumer. So something to think about. I did tighten up the tuners, but you know, you can do that too in about 30 seconds with the screwdriver. I did my own setup, but I do that on a lot of guitars. It's a solidly built guitar. It had a few little issues with mawing out of the box, but nothing that is really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. The app has a lot, has a lot going on. So many different sounds, full control over your sounds. Uh, so many different tools, drum machines, loopers, things like that. You can model different guitars with it. Um, 
I mentioned that the audio quality isn't up to snuff with you know floor modelers and stuff like that. That's a given. It's a, you know there's a small computer built into an actual guitar here, and you control it with your phone. It's not going to go toe to toe with some you know high dollar value floor modeler. Uh, I will say that in the grand scheme of things versus other headphone solutions that I use as far as audio quality goes, I'm not talking about the modeling quality, I'm talking about the audio quality coming through the headphones. I do feel like it is a little bit more filtered sounding, it's a little bit darker, it's not as clear as some of the other options that I've used in the past. But for all the functionality, that's something to balance it out against. An issue that I have, whether it be silly or very important to you, I don't know, that I have with this system when you know jamming along to YouTube videos over my phone. I have this issue with one other product that I'm not gonna mention right now. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do a video that covers all my headphone solutions in the future and I'll talk about that. But the there's lag in between the phone audio and what you're hearing in the headphone over the Bluetooth, which can be frustrating if you're trying to watch a lesson or something like that. But if you're just jamming along to music, you would never notice it. If you're watching like a music video or you're watching someone play and you're trying to learn what they're playing, that can be frustrating. Like these are all, these are all negatives that I'm trying to find so that you guys can hear that I'm giving a realistic representation of what this is. I don't want it to be all positive. N nothing is all positive. There's always negatives, right guys? But I think there's plenty of positives here that I can give this my stamp of approval. I can say that if it's in your budget and you think that this would be a good tool for you to learn guitar on as a practice tool, as a travel companion, as a guitar that you keep by the couch to jam along to music videos while you watch Law & Order with the captions on or something like that, I think it's appropriately priced and it offers a lot of functionality. So what do you guys think? Is that a fair assessment? Do you have any questions? Let me know if you have questions down in the comment section. Do you own one of these or know someone who does? And you want to pipe in with some other deep revelations and insight for anyone that might be shopping. You know, honestly, the comment section is just as valuable to people who are shopping, as my opinion is, as the video content itself. It's kind of like Yelp reviews. You go check the comment section. See what you know the end user is saying. A lot of times when I cover a product, people who have owned the product or have real world experience with it will chime in in the comment section. So check the comments. I'm not the only person in the world who's tried one of these. But yeah, I think it has plenty of merit. I'm enjoying it. There's a lot to explore there. And you know what? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked. And if you're not naked, double up. Buy a shirt and double up. Huge thanks to GTRS and Moor for sending this out to me. I appreciate it. And you know what? Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.